Oh, right, all right, all right, guys. We got ourselves a series here. It's the semi finals of the weekly NA Cup number 142, the ESL weekly. Shopify Rebellion's Beyond in the top right, playing against his longtime rival on side gaming, Solar. Solar is an absolute beast, as is Beyond right now. I think recently Beyond has actually been getting the better of Solar, if memory serves. Uh, maybe a month ago, I was casting a series between these two, and I, I looked up the head-to-head, -head, and they were exactly 50 wins and 50 losses, each of them. They, they both won 50 series out of 100 versus each other that they played. I think Beyond might be two or three series ahead now of, of Solar, but it's still, of course, overall lifetime. They've played like hundreds and hundreds of maps in tournament si situations, not even mentioning how many they've played on ladder. They know each other very well. It's going to be interesting to see because I think Bion can really get momentum and kill his opponents. On the other hand, sometimes sits still and gets hit by those Banelings a little bit too much because he tries to clump up and gun them all down and sometimes overestimates his ability. You know, it's a, it's a little bit high risk, high reward. Solar, on the other hand, uh, I would say most famous for almost winning um, late game matches and then always barely losing them. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to pile on. He's an absolute legend, but I just feel like Whenever I see Solar in a bit of a clutch position where it looks like he's barely going to win a close game, I almost know that he's going to lose it. It's this this unluckiest Zerg ever sort of thing that, you know, it's a bit of a meme, but... Oh, man. Oh! Almost loses the drone. Barely gets the Spore down. If Bion had shuffled to the right, he could have blocked that Spore from being placed. Bion is going to get some damage nonetheless. This is a very small map waterfall, but good micro by Solar. I like the way he pulls back the weak ones. Reaper comes in, gets a Zergling. Gets two Zerglings! Oh my god, if he gets another Zergling. Oh, we're not quite able to focus fire on that one there. Very hard to start a step backwards and focus fire a Zergling in the middle of a pack. That's rough. Third CC goes down right under the Overlord. No Fs given. And he's actually gone for two Reapers, guys. Not what I was expecting here. Good focus fire by Sol. It does... Oh no, he actually didn't focus fire. I thought he would have stopped the one regening. Oh, he gets the Creep Shuma. Good moves by Beyond Solar is very slow to get that third hatchery. What is going on? He's going four queen before third base? Wow. Okay, so a very different opening for Solar. At least he'll be able to respread creep very quickly because he's already got two new queens injecting and those two queens out front that should be able to block the Reapers. Starport is on the way for Beyond. Beyond sees the third bases started as well. He's going for Marines and a tech lab on the factory, which he'll be doing a bit of a swap around, no doubt. Uh, building two Marines at a time. So he's already got those rallied to the Overlord. You can see the rally point is moving with the Overlord. And that Overlord should go down with two Marines that deep underneath it. He knows he can't get out. Another Creep Tumor gets sniped. Two more go down. Gets another one and another one. Oh my gosh. Loses a Reaper, but I think it's worth it, dude. The Creep is just getting hammered backwards. And that's going to force a lot more Queen Energy out. Doesn't feel good of an opening for Solar. Beyond's already at 32 SCVs. He hasn't missed a beat. Solar, it feels like it's just taken so much damage from the start. This is very similar to what happens when I'm playing someone who's about a thousand MMR below me, where I just kind of, I win the game with the first Reaper. Now, obviously, Bion did commit a fair bit. Oh, okay. Fresh Mule, nice snipe. Solar gets the Fresh Mule, gets an SCV. SCVs and Marines together can defend. For some reason, Bion has a Cyclone. Is he going to, is he using a Cyclone to pick off Overlords? The fuck? <laughs> He's doing a four marine cyclone drop to pick off overlords. Very cute. Okay, very, very cute play out of beyond here. Not something you normally do up against a, a Zerg player. But uh, yeah, just kind of doing his own thing. 42 drones only right now. Double Evo Chamber is on the way, but Solar also building a spore on that far left side. Overlords are trying to get out of there. Nah, -uh, beyond ain't gonna let that happen. You can see the cyclone locks on. Once it gets the lock, there's no escape. Can go around and try to get this overlord too this overlord i think far enough back we'll see if the queens can deflect this solar would like to land some hits on that already gets two hits on the medevac but the overlord does pull back good defense by solar but you can already see what this does to solar's map vision he doesn't have overlords out here he doesn't have vision all the way out to the middle of the map like they like to normally have and oh another lock comes in there but good transfuses double transfuse goes down gets a marine kill this does nonetheless drain some of that queen energy. And behind this, going up to the lots of barracks, extra reactors building, which tells us it's going to be Widowmine bioplay. Widowmines are amazing. I really think there was a period recently where not enough players were playing them. Now that we're back on smaller maps in this map pool compared to last season's Glittering Ashes and the like, it does seem like more people are, are willing to do it. He's going to see the factory doesn't see the add-on. 
So Solar doesn't know that he's up against that. Lair is on the way. He's up to one, two, three, four gases. And a fourth base on the left side at a decent time. I feel like Solar's as, as bad as the early game seemed for him and he's lost quite a few units. It seems okay now. He's up eight workers. The third is about to land for Bion and of course transferring all these extra, extra lads down. But the 1-1 one, one upgrades are pretty much lined up. It's a 10, 20 second lead for Solar. But his Baneling speed will be delayed for a long time. And I think Bion will be looking for probably pushing down both sides of the map at the same time. With the parade push uh, where you push just one path, might be better on a different sort of map. This map, so many wide open areas. I think you'll have some units on the right, some on the left, and you'll just try to keep working those angles as much as you can. Drop comes down here. He's going to take out that creep tumor. Eh, nice little stim there. Scan takes out a few of those. Um, does lose just one marine there. Picks off a few zerglings. Baneling speed's on the way. Hydrogen. Okay, that's what I was about to wonder. I was like, Solar, where do you go from here? Do you just play Hydras? Um, if he knows it's Widow Mines, Hydras are the best play because they can outrange the Widow Mines and pick them off. And interestingly, we haven't seen many Widow Mines built yet. Widow Mines build really quickly. You can actually build six Widow Mines um, out of a reacted factory in 63 seconds, so just over a minute. How about Cyclone? Bunch of Marines and a Reaper over here. I think Bion's going to throw away the Hellbat and the Cyclone because they take up a lot of space in the medevac. So just wants to trade off these units, simplify his army, see what he can do. Nice drop coming in the back at the same time. Slow Banelings coming in. Hellbat takes a few of those. The Cyclone. Widowmine does burrow. Oh, good Baneling hit. Uh, or hit from the Widowmine on the Baneling, I should say. Looks like the Marines drop in. They're forcing lost mining time. Being very annoying is Beyond right now. Solar's going to try to force his way on top. Beyond does save all of the Marines on the left side. And the Marines in the main will go down, only getting two kills. So a little bit scrappy there, but Solar's being distracted. As a result, hasn't started this plus two melee. 2-2 two -two does start up for Beyond. The double drop's going to work that left angle. We've got a fourth command center and a second factory with a tech lab. So Beyond's playing a... Uh, standard style. We've seen so many two and three base pushes, big sharp timing attacks. This time around, Beyond's just like, no, nope, we're just going to harass, you know, we're just going to go back to that older style. Oh, if he doesn't change the order of those medevacs, he can't fly past. He actually unloads immediately. Where are the queens or hydras? This drop should be dead. I can't believe it's wasting so much of his time. The widow mines are getting in the front. Uh oh. Oh, big hit on the queen. The banelings do clear both of those widow mines, though. And another baneling does get focused down. Beyond. Oh, he's going to lose the medevacs inside the main. The queens and the hydras fighting that does pick up some of the marines on the front and saves them. The marines trying to fight this out. The medevac goes down. So does a queen, though. Beyond's trading all right here. Feels like he's creating some real chaos for Solar. Solar's. Not got a lot of units. Then again, Bion is pushing with like, what, five, six marines and, and four medevacs right now? This is a real weird trickle of units. It feels like Bion is forcing a scrappy game, but he's making just as many mistakes as Solar is. I don't feel like either player has a real tangible advantage. Solar's got the fifth on the right. Bion's got his fourth on the way, though, and he's only behind four SCVs. Drilling Claws is on the way as well. There's no infestation pit. Plus two melee, remember, still has not started. Solar's going to go to start some upgrades in the near future and you might realize that hatchery placement is really weird that's going to wall off this area and make it harder to get back in his main to defend drops hopefully that doesn't come to bite him in the ass later on in this game uh two two upgrades not quite finished here for Terran. they will be finished soon for solar and baneling's running on in marines and marauders should take care of that concussive shell has not been upgraded so he should notice that now and then start it as a result of seeing that those Banelings were not being slowed down. Now that he's into Marauder production, it's very important that he adds that. He's forgotten it. Plus two melee does start for Solar. No ranged upgrades on the way for him. Even though he's on Hydras, he's only got seven of them. So fair enough. Oh, Beyond! Oh my god, he almost stumbles into a terrible situation. Does end up saving those units. He's got a Widow Mine there. No tanks or anything. Remember, this base could just get busted through. You gotta be careful. Oh, Beyond does have a Widow Mine that gets defused. You gotta be careful, running back into this choke can be good for you, it can also be bad! Oh my god! Not many areas to run, the Banelings go after the depots, lots of those do go down. Drop in the south does make its way past. Hydras are all on the front line, so we can't gun down that drop on the back with anything except Queens. Banelings do get some decent hits on the Marines, but the SCV line's been protected. Thinks about going back to mining, realizes, nah, there's no way. He can't drop in the back, there's a lot of Ling Bane there. It's a great trade for Solar in terms of denying the base. The problem for him is that he doesn't have Hive Tech on the way. <laughs> bad casting his hive just finished he has a viper there <laughs> he just is on the way so he is going for one viper now vipers aren't very good versus widow mine styles it's basically just to parasitic bomb the medevacs and and get rid of this medevacs in the corner other than that we should be seeing adrenal glands plus three carapace being high priority upgrades and i wouldn't mind uh lurker tech ultra tech something like that to, to add 
in some next layer. Broodlords would actually be really good versus Widowmine Ghostblade, I believe. Uh, obviously, Ghost can deal with Broodlords, but can work out. Hatchery on the left gets cancelled. Big Doom drop in the back. These drops, not waiting for the Vipers to find him. Goes in, drops some units, gets five workers. Army on the left side at the same time. Beyond's looking to force those mistakes. He's got a very Marauder-heavy force. It makes it a much tankier army, but he has no Widowmines left on this side. And that means this army needs to get out of there. Those guys are going to try and run. Looks like these units took some damage. Spores, Lings, Banes have moved in from all sides. SCV's trying to repair at this base, but uh, no actual units killing the Zerglings. Beyond does not have a fifth base. He's going to start that command center now. Solar's growth, though, has been unimpeded. He's got the Viper out. He's got some upgrades finishing. Still no Adrenal Glands. And it is finally melee coming in. Three more Vipers? That's really weird. I mean, against a guy who's just going to swap in a ghost, I guess he just wants to spam parasitic bombs and that sort of stuff. And, and Blinding Cloud on the bio can be good as well. I mean, Blinding Cloud is, is probably a bit underrated against pure bio. Really makes them bug out. Okay, the unit's coming on forward. Marauders, Marines, Widow Mines are spread, but not spread well enough. And once again, it feels like beyond a little bit just kind of trying to shove it and catch his opponent off guard. Not really setting up for the perfect fight so much as trying to catch his opponent with his pants down. But he's going to keep denying the sixth base on the left side. The two Marine drop in the back being a bit of a nuisance. If he could just set up a giant spread here, I think it'd be pretty good. Beyond does not get rid of that creep tumor. A lot of the Widow Mines are up. Uh, there we go. Does burrow them, but a lot of them, yeah, three Widow Mines go down before firing and that makes things very nasty there's 13 hydras four vipers will be coming in from behind this no doubt widow mines trying to get some hits but not doing a lot to stall this zerg advance and a lot of widow mines have gone down without many good hits and that's because he's not set up properly these fights beyond's army isn't gunning down the front running units making it very trivial uh very true just making it trivial for solar for the zerglings to basically split off in front of the army so he can just split a zergling off set off a widow mine and that's why I think we want to see a few more pre-spread engagements from Beyond. He's doing a good job of distracting with the drops. But you've also got to keep in mind this creep now on his doorstep. Good creep on the right path. Solar definitely needs to fill in this gap. Needs to keep spreading on the left. But overall, I actually think, uh, you know, Beyond has lost a little bit of momentum. If Solar can just hang on for another minute, I think this turns in his favor with Lurkers. Right now, Beyond still has a much bigger army. But... Got to do something with that advantage. Here we go. Widow Mines do a bit of friendly fire. They take out a lot of the Zerglings as well. Trying to boost out of their Hydras on Creep Hot in their tail. The Metavax will... Oh, barely get to safety. But will they? Vipers are coming in. Oh, get out of there. He sees the Vipers and does get out, thankfully. That could have been very bad if they got hit by the Parasitic Bombs. This is what I'm talking about. The Widow Mines being out front unsupported. Once again, Beyond's Widow Mines not landing any hits. Uh, this is a big issue that he's having. Parasitic Bombs on the Metavax forcing him to spread... The drop actually flies past this army. Absolute madness for Beyond. Banelings get a few decent hits. The production here under Assault Solar, though. He's throwing away a lot of units in the counter drop. This going to make him pay. Beyond's into ghost production behind this. He's also got his 3-3 upgrades kicking in. This bio doing what it can to distract. He gets another 6 drone kills. Only 72 left, but a full medevac is going to go down for it. That's a very costly engagement. The Vipers pulling on back. Looks like they were kind of stuck up in the corner. Three Vipers are still alive in this game. 13 Hydras, two more on the way. He's trying to make Lurker upgrades. I'd like to see just a few Lurkers morphing for Solar. I think they'd do so much for him in this game. Feels like Beyond is only really expanding, transferring Workers as an afterthought. After an army gets stopped, right? For him, it's like attack, 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 attack. Try and roll Solar over. And then whenever you get held back, that's when you expand. And since he's been held back a few times in a row, he's got three extra orbitals that he'll be making in the main. But uh, fifth base is up for him, Planetary on the left. As time goes on, it should favor the Terran player. Even though the unit's lost tab's good for Solar for a long drawn out game, we're like, oh, that's pretty close. In this sort of game where Beyond isn't building his economy that hard, it's huge. Big Widow Mine gets 19 Zerglings on the corner. Oh, those corners, always very scary areas. Orbital does lift, SCVs get out of there. Very good moves by Beyond to defend this, but you can see he's kind of uh, turtling up a little bit more now in Solar. Oh, Solar goes, go, pulls out, goes right back in. He's like, no, 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 you thought I'd left? No way, dude. That orbital could get focused. If he clicks on that with the Hydras, that could be big. One Viper does get sniped. A couple of SCVs go down, but not too much. Going to repair these buildings and no doubt try to rebuild these tech labs. Ooh, harassing Lurker behind the planetary. That there is a sexy move. And he's attacking on the right as well. Just making things difficult here for Beyond. Another parasitic bomb goes down, gets one, two, three. Matavax make it four. Almost gets the fourth one, just barely out of range. 
Marines are there as well. Got to watch out. That's a lot of Marines up against the corner. Beyond trapped in a corner. The Banelings get some juicy hits. And it feels like Solar's broken him. Yeah, that's where the, the third, the second factory and the last three barracks were. Only one barracks remains. The orbital's still up. But uh, I, I kind of feel like Solar's just got enough momentum now with his 3-3 upgrades coming in. Beyond's going to have to tap out. And Solar... Kicking some butt right there. GG, well played. Up against the wall, but he manages to defend all of Beyond's aggression and turn it around with the Lurkers in the late game. Alright, looked like he played a really nice early game, but I think he just got a little bit too sloppy as that game went on. Let's see if he can turn it around now. Command Center first. The build that's taken over the community. Up against Solar here. He's going for a hatch first. Now, I think it was... Uh, Yesterday in GSL, Solar did a bit of a Ling Flood off a pool first against Bunny's Command Center first on this map. I'm sure there's somebody who's like, oh, spoilers. Oh. But uh, that's literally all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, it was it was not like a giant flood. It was just like, I think 14 Zerglings maybe? Got a few SCVs, messed up his opponent's opening. It was, it was an interesting little adjustment there. But uh, this is going to be a very quick factory for Beyond behind this. This is not the multiple barracks version. He's gone double gas. So this is going to go straight probably to Hellion Banshee is usually what you do here. And uh, maybe three racks afterwards. Uh, maybe go for the big two base all in. I mean, we've seen Beyond win so many games with that on this map. The, I mean, we, we the tank here and the tank here is just one of the most deadly things ever. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some Zergs start taking this third and then this is their fourth. And they're just like, yep. No, nope, I'm, I'm done. They're like, I'm done dealing with those tank pushes on that position. <laughs> it's like, and then the Terran probably start pushing and putting tanks down here or something, wouldn't they? Which would also be really hard to engage into because they'd see your flank coming miles away with the watchtower, but might be a bit easier to defend. We'll see what happens as this goes on. Three on one gas, one on the other. Very uh, inefficient there. Not very inefficient, but just inefficient. Should have gone 2-2 two, two and then rallied the final ones in, but... It is what it is. Factory's on the way. No scout for Beyond, by the way. One base Ravager is a free win versus a lot of these command center first openings. The ones where you go straight two or three barracks can usually survive, but into the factory? Nah. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no how. Double alien production on the way, and he's getting the tech lab ready for the starport. Depot goes up in the wall off as well. That second depot gets to go down so late when you go for the CC first. It's beautiful. Third hatchery is almost finished here for Solar. He's got one worker on gas, which will give him enough to start that lair at a good time. So he can go into a quick baneling speed. Baneling speed being up quickly is what allows you to really engage into those two base bio pushes that are so common off the command center first. Fusion core, no way. Beyond is playing battle cruiser opening. Now there's no way he's playing mech. Beyond doesn't know how to play mech, surely. But one or two BCs into mech could be cool. Um, Obviously, it's not double port. He would need extra gases if he was doing that. I would say it's probably just one or two BCs. Actually, it might even be one BC into a two base bio push. That's an older build. It's a, it's an older code, but it checks out. You know, it's <laughs> it can it can do really well if the BC gets a bit of damage. He's going around just picking things off. Gets your opponent to commit to spire, overcommit to like queens, droning up to recover from the bc damage and then bam but no it's actually gonna be a third command center so bc into macro Ooh, very crisp all right guys so the battle cruiser is gonna start here at about 422 very nice that means that battle cruiser will be hitting at about five minutes 35 is when it'll appear inside solar's base 64 second build time for a battle cruiser no chrono boost for terran sadly can't get that out any quicker Spores are going down very early on each base, which is actually unnecessary. You don't really need to build those till about 5 minutes 20 to defend this, but Solar's going to come in, and there's almost nothing that shoots up, so yeah, he'll he'll get a full scout. That'll give him about 20 seconds warning, so this first battle cruiser will have to teleport down here off to the side. Um, if it teleports on top after being scouted, like right in the mineral line or something, that'd be an absolute disaster. So Overlord comes in. Bit of a shame that Beyond didn't have a Marine up there. And uh, as a result, the Overlord sees it. So no Yamato. He's going double engineering bay behind the natural. Uh, Beyond, I mean, Solar doesn't know that it's bio, you could argue, because that stim could be a fake, but he's playing Beyond. So he knows. And like I said, he should be teleporting the BC here, because if he teleports anywhere in the main, he's going to have a bunch of queens on his face immediately. He could teleport up here as well. Let's see, where's he going to go? 
Okay, he just goes straight in the back. Yeah, that works. Gives him two different mineral lines he can harass. The queen's gonna have to split between these bases. Sees the queens on the left, he should just pull immediately to the right. And those queens, of course, can't be everywhere at once. So BC can do a flyby now. Just tank the spore, go after these drones. You can see he paused shooting for a second. That's because he was targeting a drone. The drone got out of range. Not the best target fire there for Bion. Only gets one drone, taking a lot of damage. Hellions are trying to drive in at the front. Oh, this is really bad if he loses these Hellions. Okay, he's doing all right. He's doing all right. But BC only gets a total of four kills. So three drones going down here. Okay, all right, a couple more drones going down. Hellbats, oh wow! He actually gets all the Banelings just before they finish. That is absolutely massive, that is. The Hellbats come forward, so as the Queens go on the BC, the Hellbats might come back in, but he pulls back for now. Third base is up, four more barracks on the way. That's right, guys, he's going straight to eight racks. I think we're seeing a 2-2 two -two Marine tank push. A very committed three base push going eight barracks. We might not even see add-ons on the last three barracks, right? We'll see exactly which direction he chooses to go. He's building these barracks in the wall off. He's got tanks building one at a time, combat shields, plus one, all of that stuff. Bion's going to teleport home and then use his battle cruiser to go forward. This overseer, crucial for Solar. He's going into muters and he's trying to start his double evo, but he's going to be dealing with a huge push coming across this map. This overseer coming in, Bion can stim some marines on that. That'll be good. He's going to try and get rid of that. Gets rid of those changelings, the other marines. He should definitely be grabbing these marines and getting them in the main. A little bit lazy just sending that same squad of marines from the low ground to the high ground. I mean, it works. Solar does see an extra barracks finishing. That might give him an inkling of the fact that this is an eight racks. Hard to make that read, though. 1-1 one, one upgrades are on the way for him as well as Baneling Speed. He's got six muters out, two more on the way. Not really enough to crush a battle cruiser, but with some transfusers, they can definitely beat it back. For now, he should be avoiding fighting the battle cruiser is what i'd argue he should go around and try to harass the main base uh do we have add-ons on those barracks reactor 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 oh my god guys is he just going pure marine oh my god beyond is going mass marine oh my god he's going the reactor style innovations favorite build back in the day innovations everyone would either go no add-ons for immediate marine production to make it like more of a, a super committed attack or they'd go tech labs for marauders for the tankiness. And then there was Innovation who would sometimes just go mass reactor marines for raw firepower. It is a glass cannon army. It's crazy damage output, but uh, it, 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 it definitely, if it gets hit by Banelings, it's all over very quickly. Oh, he catches a big Baneling morph, but he's got a pre-spread. Pre-spread beyond. Pre-spread. He's way too far forward with those marines. Oh, but it's okay. He's on top of the base. He's doing damage. BC. Did it go down, guys? The BC is still alive. Looks like it teleported down here to join up with the army. Those Marines up front trying to do a lot of damage. This fourth base is going to go down. I don't think Solar can defend this, can he? This is a huge amount of damage. Plus two attacks on the way. The 1-1 one -one is not done yet for Solar. So there's a 1-1 one -one upgrade right now for Beyond. Solar does not want to fight. Solar has to give this base up. Solar should be backstabbing. He should not be letting this army reinforce. I mean, I understand he's trying to keep the hatchery alive. He's trying to wait for Carapace to kick in. I don't know, though, dude. Somehow he's kept the hatchery alive. He beats Beyond back, at least temporarily. Beyond does not have a lot of medevacs here, but more are arriving. Hellbats and Marines coming on forward. The tank's getting some good shots off. Those queens are taking big damage. How many muters has he got out? 11 muters. Here we go. Big stim. The Marines run forward to greet this army. Good pullback. The BC is trying to fight. The Banelings get some decent hits on the right side. That's a route. That is a route. Oh my god, absolutely stunning engagement there for Solar. Waits for his 1-1 upgrades to finish by his time. And the hatchery survives. Beyond's got to be kicking himself for not committing in there a little bit harder. That being said, he's building 13 marines at a time and a fourth command center. So I think he's actually still got the ability to rebuild a very scary army very quickly. Problem is with no widow mines or thors, the mutiling bane's kind of tough to deal with. Two muters go down though. Very nice intercept with those marines. He's trying to catch them. Don't know if he saw those muters going back to the right side. He's going to notice them in a moment. Splits those marines off on the left, trying to make sure that base can't get taken. We'll deny the drone there. But he gets jumped on on the front. Oh my gosh, Beyond getting ambushed today. He's a little cavalier with his engagements. I think Solar's clued onto this. And because of that, he's, he's ambushing him. He's not sitting back and giving Beyond the respect because Beyond's not earning it. Beyond is kind of rushing in there and he's not set up before the fight goes down. So nonetheless, a very scary army of, of just raw marine firepower. Solar has to have enough Banelings. If he ever gets caught without the Banelings, I mean, right now it is a, an upgrade advantage. Beyond's army is very scary. A double drop's going to go in the main. This is his way of punishing the muters. He says, oh, you want to cut off my rally? 
well, guess what? I'll double drop your main. You don't have your muters at home to defend. Saul is like, ah, oh, shit. Got to get back there to defend. His lings do go in the main. And the marines are a little spread out. So it looks like a decent hold with the zerglings. These marines will pull back for now. Those marines really clumped up at the front. Beyond shoving on in there like a mad lad. The Banelings, oh, here they come. Here come the Banelings. The redrop in the main is where it's going to be for Beyond. He's trying to just stim and run home. The Marine drop in the main going for the damage, but great reaction by Sola. He's only going to lose six drones here and one Mutalist. Two Muters. Can he get a third one? Yeah, Beyond gets a few Muters there, so not bad. Focus Fire, he's up to 10 Muter kills, and he's still got 40 new Marines on the front. 14 building at a time. His fourth command center, by the looks of it, got canceled. And that's huge. That's a big problem. If he had a fourth up right now, I, th I would actually say Beyond's fine. Without the fourth and with Solar getting a fifth, he needs to get rid of that fifth base of Solar or, or he's just going to be screwed the longer this goes. But I like that he's rotating and moving up to the left now. He sees the hatchery finishing. Unsieges the tank. He is going to move over here. The Marines have 2-2. Two, two. The Zerg has 1-2. And plus one attack on the muters as well. Forcing these marines to stim. Very nice. The tanks are sieged. The marines trying to hold their ground. But a giant Ling Bane flank. And look at that. Just sending him on home. It's a glass cannon army. And the moment you're caught without enough units, we really get to see the glass nature of it. You know, it's, it's just one good hit of the solar hammer. And the entire pain shatters to the ground. Shards going everywhere. And Solar barely getting cut in the process. Very nice play there by Solar. Gets the 2-0 and goes to the Grand Finals.